Hi guys! In the last few years, I've been doing a lot more traveling than I've done basically in my entire life, and a lot of it has been by myself, so I've had to make these grown-up decisions by myself. One of the hardest things for me at first was just packing that bag for the carry-on flight. What do I bring with me? What do I absolutely need? What should I have just in case? And now, after having done several flights, ranging from 45 minutes to like eight and a half hours, I think, I've kind of figured out what I basically need. So today what I'm going to do is just tell you guys some of the things that I always like to bring on long flights and what I recommend you to bring too. Obviously this is going to vary a lot from person to person, so let me know in the comments if you have some different things that you recommend, but these are just some of the things that I have found pretty essential in some really, really long flights. So here we go. The first one I'm going to mention is what I think is the most important one on the entire list, and that is all of your travel documents and your ID and your wallet and your money and all of that. Of course your passport if you're going to go out of country, an ID like a driver's license or something even if you're staying in country or just as a backup ID if you're going out of country. Anything like your hotel reservations or train reservations or even if you're gonna go on another flight a week after after you land there, I still recommend having some sort of paper or reservation or something for that too even if you don't need it just yet. Maybe I'm a little bit over cautious but I just like to have all those things with me. You never know when a bag is gonna get lost and obviously stuff like your passport and your ID and stuff you're gonna need that for your flight. So yes now that we have that out of the way, the most essential part of this entire video, the next thing on the list is an e-reader or a book. Personally, I recommend an e-reader over a book for traveling. You can fit more than a suitcase worth of books on one of these things, and as long as you have a charger with it and you fully charge it before, you're good to go. I don't know about you guys, but I also tend to be in the middle of a few books at a time, and I'm never quite sure which one I'm going to be in the mood to read. With an e-reader, you can just load it up with as many books as you want, whether you've started them or not started them, different genres, you can put articles and things like that, whatever you might fancy reading at that moment. The next thing I recommend is an iPod or some sort of device that plays music like this. I'm not the type to get motion sick very easily, but still sometimes I do get a little bit queasy on planes, especially when I'm trying to read or like look at my computer or anything like that. I like to bring an iPod because listening to music keeps me entertained without having to read anything or look closely at anything. One thing in particular I recommend is that you load it up with some new music. I always like downloading an album or two or something before I go on a big trip, especially if it's going to be a really long plane ride. I have a lot of good music on here. I have lots of different genres and albums and everything, so I can always find something I want, but it's especially interesting when I buy something new because then it gives me a reason to stop looking at a screen and to actually just kind of close my eyes for a little bit. I also often bring my computer, so yes, I do take a lot of electronics on my carry-on, but I like to keep all that stuff close to me. I'm afraid it's going to get broken or stolen or damaged or whatever, but my iPod tends to be a little more helpful when I'm actually on the flight because I like to just close my eyes and listen to music. The next thing I recommend, even if you don't have an iPod or a computer or something, is bring headphones. I think a lot of planes are starting to give these to you free and not make you pay for them like they used to, but I'm still not sure if all airlines do that or all flight lengths offer that, so it's always just good to have a pair of headphones just in case they have the TV screens and you want to watch something or you just don't want to use the other headphones. Personally, I have my iPhone headphones that I really like. I like the way they feel. I'm used to them, so I just take them around with me everywhere. And I often like to bring a plain snack and a bottle of water when I go on flights. If you want a snack like a sandwich or a salad or something open like that, you have to get it at the airport and you also have to get your water at the airport, but I highly, highly recommend you do this before you get on the plane. I know airport stuff is so overpriced and I hate buying stuff there, but when it comes to a snack for energy and water to keep you hydrated, I think it's worth it. You can get that stuff on the plane. They will give you water for free, and I'm pretty sure they usually have snacks on most planes, but those are also overpriced, and I just like to have it already with me so I don't have to call over the flight attendant and ask for something. One of the most important things to remember when you're on a flight is to stay hydrated. It really stinks to have to get up and go to the bathroom more than once or even once when you're on a long flight, but it's so worth it. If you stay hydrated, you will feel so much better. And next, let's talk about clothes a little bit. Wear comfortable clothes. Please, for the love of humanity, do not waste your time putting on a face full of makeup and a cute outfit and high heels, because at the end of your flight, especially if it's over, you know, 20 minutes, you're not gonna look like that. If you need to look good right after, I suggest taking the clothes that you need to wear and your makeup and all that stuff on the flight with you so that you can go to a bathroom or something at the airport and fix yourself up. Personally, I don't even really bother putting on makeup for most of my flights. I usually just put it on when I get wherever I'm going. And wear something that you're super comfortable in because you're gonna be sitting in the same seat for a very long time and you don't want that moment to be the one that you find out that these jeans are a little tight or the shirt doesn't quite fit you right. I recommend just dressing in layers. So a tank and then maybe a light sweater and a jacket or a coat or whatever you need, whatever temperature it might happen to be at that point, and then just be prepared to shed layers or put on more layers. And one of the layers that I usually choose to wear when I'm on a plane is a hoodie because I like to pull the hood up when I fall asleep. That way my head doesn't fall quite so badly side to side. That's the most embarrassing thing ever, and I have done it before. Moving along. 
To the next thing, which is clothes related as well, I recommend you bring a spare change of clothes on the plane. I have not had any horror stories about planes losing my luggage, thank god. I say that and I should probably knock on wood. But too many of my friends and too many people in general have had this happen, and there's always that chance that if you check a bag, it's gonna get lost. So if you have just one spare change of clothes that you can change into so you're not in your plain clothes, that could be very, very helpful. Next, I always bring with me lotion and hand sanitizer. These are things that are usually in my purse anyway, just kind of as, a, as an everyday thing, but I especially want them when I'm traveling. Hand sanitizer because airports are kind of germy, they're kind of gross. I love them, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of germs, there are a lot of people coming and going constantly, so I always, always have hand sanitizer with me. For the lotion, again, something that I always have with me just in case, but it's especially helpful when you're traveling because places like airports and airplanes have a lot of fake air. They're constantly ventilating places with air conditioning and fans and trying to keep things cool for everyone traveling, and that means that it dries out your skin really, really badly. I find especially the plane itself is kind of like this, so I always bring lotion with me so I can just reapply and reapply as many times as I need to during the eight hours. And lastly, I recommend you bring a charged phone and a phone charger. I always have these things with me anyway, well, usually my charger too, but always my phone, and I always try to keep it charged, but it's really, really important when you're traveling, and I think planes are starting to put places where you can plug in at least a USB charger while you're on the plane, like at your seat, but I'm not sure all planes have this just yet, or sometimes things malfunction and your particular charger might not work, so it's good just to make sure your phone is charged up before you get on the plane. But have the charger with you in case, and you can usually charge your phone at the airport as well. So there are the things that I like to take on all my flights, especially long flights. Let me know in the comments what are some of the things that you guys always have to have with you and that you think are essential for traveling. This video has actually made me miss traveling on planes. Is that weird? Is that normal? A lot of people really don't like traveling by airplane, especially because the airport security and and the, just the hassle of it and the length and all of that, but I like it. It's exciting. I don't like the travel maybe itself, but knowing that I'm going someplace new and knowing that I'm gonna land and be in some new new place with new people and new things, oh, it's so exciting. Thank you guys all so much for watching as always, and I will see you in my next video.